floating in the water. So how strong is this rum? It's 100%. That's 100%? Oh. Yeah. Smell it? Yeah, it smells like gasoline. Jamaica was once a hub for some of the nastiest pirates and buccaneers in the Caribbean. The most famous of all these was Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. You men are the pariahs of Charlestown, and I would profit better by using your organs for chum and your bones for char. Blackbeard's impact was so massive that you can still see the lasting effects of his legacy today. So we came to Jamaica to learn the history and see for ourselves what it was about Blackbeard and these outlaws that's captured the imagination of popular culture for centuries. Most pirates were young guys. They were trained in warfare often. Blackbeard, the epitome of a real warrior, a real fighter. He claimed to be in league with the devil or the brother of the devil. Blackbeard is most famously known for his capture of the French slave ship La Concorde which he renamed Queen Anne's Revenge and used to pillage the Caribbean. Blackbeard's probably the most notorious and famous pirate of them all because he's a thinking man's pirate who spent a great deal of time cultivating his visage of terror. He would tie lighted hemp fuses into his beard that would cast smoke all over him like an apparition from Hades as he's approaching a vessel to capture it. You know, as soon as people heard that it was Blackbeard pursuing them, they'd surrender, which is exactly what Blackbeard wanted. Like most pirates, Blackbeard was after whatever he could sell on the black market. And the main currency in this part of the world was sugar. In the 1700s, the world's desire for sugar was insatiable. Islands like Jamaica, Cuba, and Hispaniola were churning out this white gold for Europe at an incredible rate, making sugar trade routes ripe for the picking for pirates. Where there was sugar, there was rum. And no matter how much rum there was, it was never enough. We headed a few hours outside of Kingston to a rum distillery to learn about the rum trade from cane to bottle and to figure out why rum was such a powerful form of currency for Blackbeard and the pirates. Drink was extremely important. I mean, after a few days at sea, the ship's barrels of water are typically turning green and causing dysentery just by themselves. Since it was not safe to drink the water that was on your vessels, people were drinking spirits and beer and especially rum in enormous quantities. This is Hampton Estate, a distillery that has been using the same equipment and recipe for over 270 years, a recipe as old as the pirates themselves. So what do you have over here? We're making rum, and I'd like to show you some of it. And oh, yeah, let's check it out. Yeah, okay. Rum is still such a huge commodity in Jamaica that at one point, 40% of their product was being hijacked by workers and sold on the black market, a practice that continues today. The distillery is situated within 50 acres of sugarcane fields which are part of a plantation that dates back to the 18th century. Hundreds of migrant workers camp here for three to four months each year to harvest the crop. Harvesting sugarcane is backbreaking work that must be done by hand. The object is to cut the cane stalks just above the roots so the plants can grow again and again. You wanna try now? Tell me where to go. Just grab. You got it too far. Uh, you got it low, low. Yeah, yeah, good job. It's not doing that bad. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Not good, but not bad. <laughs> Back in Blackbeard's day, the competition amongst nations and pirates to acquire sugar and rum was fierce, because out on the lawless ocean, a hefty stockpile was worth more than gold. Realize pirates most of the time were drunk. I mean, that was their whole incentive to be a pirate, was unlimited liquor. All the liquor on board was open to every man. Every man had an equal vote in affairs of the day. Every man had equal access. They would capture a ship and have all that booze. They wouldn't really ration it. No, they'd drink it until it was gone. And then they'd complain to the captain that he wasn't a good captain because he couldn't get him more rum. The process of making rum hasn't really changed since the days of pirates. These are the fermented fruits. Some people see this and they don't want to drink rum again. Feels like it's from the 18th century. The concept is simple. You cut the cane, crush and squeeze the cane juice, ferment the juice with yeast, boil the fermented juice, collect the condensed alcohol, drink and get drunk. Which Blackbeard did, time and time again. 
We went to sample some of the undiluted product the pirates used to pillage. So what's going on in this booze lab? This is our lab where we uh, test the uh, rum. Historically, has the booze always been the same percent? Well, the booze is always around 85 to 86 percent when it's made. Do you mind if I have a, a sip of it at 80 percent, just to see what it was like back then? Small no, sip? No, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty deep burn. Wow, I can't believe people actually drank bottles of that. No. There were probably trade-offs in the dependence that pirates and other sailors had on hard drinking. Yeah, it may have made it more likely that you're going to fall from the rigging, but there were probably some advantages in that people were doing grueling work in terrible conditions, often with poor sleep, and I think it was similar in many ways to how some people ended up being hooked on OxyContin today. First you injure yourself doing your work and then you start taking that to relieve the pain and you discover that it helps you survive what is otherwise a backbreaking and difficult labor. I think that was similar for rum and wine and the things that sailors and pirates were drinking. The rum running legacy the pirates left behind is still rampant in Jamaica today. Back in Kingston, we met with a local bootlegger who asked to be called Mafia. He lives in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in town and we were cautioned to be on guard at all times. Mafia buys gallons of full strength rum that have been stolen from the rum distilleries. He then waters it down, bottles it and sells it on the street for twice the profit. He asks us to hide his identity. So the black market's big in Jamaica? Yeah, it's loads in Jamaica. So everybody's drinking the rum? Long time, long time, all around town. How do you get it? I just get it from guys who have to take, you know? I mean, are they stealing it from the distilleries? I don't care that. You just know a guy who's got that? Yeah. But you don't pay any taxes no, on any no, of this? No, 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 I don't pay any taxes. It's just all profit. A black market profit at the expense of the taxman is the bond Mafia shares with Blackbeard and the pirates that were here long ago. Proving, as long as the possibility of easy money has existed, the risk of living outside the law has outweighed the cost of getting busted. How dangerous is this? It's very dangerous. Cops all over it and they want to bring it to jail, maybe go prison. Even the rigors of prison, by today's standards, pales in comparison to the fate suffered by the pirates years ago. Blackbeard's life as an outlaw didn't last long. He was killed in battle at Ocracoke Island during an early morning surprise attack by the Navy. He'd been partying all night, forgot to put an outlook on duty, and legend has it, he and his men were too hungover to put up any real fight during battle. There was a philosophy amongst pirates, a short and merry life, you know. I mean, they knew that they were going to be tracked down. Eventually, they would probably be caught, put on trial, and executed. They became heroes amongst ordinary people while they were still alive. And because they brought three empires nearly to their knees and cut off commerce and were threatening colonies, they got a lot of attention. They made a big splash. Thumbing his nose at the crown earned Blackbeard an outlaw status that's withstood the test of time. But when the British Navy started bringing law and order back to the sea, they suffered punishment and death in ways we could hardly imagine today. So if you were coming into Kingston Harbor, you saw pirates hanging right there. Right there. So this is where Jack Rackham was hanging? Uh, this is where Jack Rackham was hanging. A short and merry life indeed. <laughs>